Hello, this is Steve Knoll from Chemco Systems. I'm going to review a procedure uh, which is included in your submittal book and your CD uh, for tuning in or possibly replacing a VFD on a direct contact water heater. Um, this procedure is number 10-775. Uh, it opens up in Excel or uh, free shareware kind of things like Open Office which is what it's doing right now. What we're going to do is uh, also get familiar what we're trying to do here and then which parameters are important if you ever had to replace your drive uh, which are indicated in red. Um, but uh, most importantly when you change a pressure transducer sometimes a pressure transducer differs from the other one a bit and we have to uh, change a few parameters. But before we get into that, you can see there's quite a few parameters in the drives. The red ones are ones that have to be changed from default. And we're going to come back to that here in a little bit. But at the bottom of this procedure, um, there's some drawings and a couple calculations and things like that we're going to look at to let you know what we're trying to do here before we start talking about uh, drive parameters. Um, this uh, talks about the application. It's uh, for a chemical water heater to control a level inside our water heater vessel, uh, which I'm not going to read that to you. You can read that if you like, because you have this procedure. A whole bunch of notes there, but down here at the bottom of it, there's um, a curve. These are the two parameters we're going to talk about here in a little bit, but it's CRL3 and CRH3 which is the low point and a high point for which the water level is going to modulate between via the VFD. This is a picture pretty much of the Kemco water heater um, inside. Basically the water heater is uh, just a open vessel. Uh, it happens to have a pump suction on it which in many instances has a turn down in here that's got a 45 and that but um, the set point of CRL3 is related to keeping the low part of that level approximately two inches above the pump suction so we don't don't swirl air into the suction and cause the pump to lose prime. The CRH3 permissive uh, which is the second one that we're going to uh, have to adjust possibly when we change the transducer is set to be approximately six inches below the burner flooded safety that um, will shut the machine down. Usually a burner flooded condition can happen when the pump that's connected to this fitting doesn't come on or if for some reason the level is pulled down too far and the pump suction which normally is connected here uh, pulls in a, uh, uh, some air and when it pulls in the air it uh, then gets air bound and, and it could cause the flood um, because a pump won't pump with air in the uh, impeller of it. So these are the two set points. The CRL3 is down here and the CRH3 is up here and in this picture above it that is uh, basically the range it'll control between and uh, let's see what else we got down here. These are some calculations that uh, are very helpful. Uh, we're adjusting in 0.1 milliamp increments. So in the adjustments we're going to look at in the parameter sheet above, every 0.1 milliamps that you change the number will change whichever level by 0.87 inches. So 0.1 milliamps is equal to 0.87 inches. So here's a very normal uh, setting of parameters. This is the pressure transducer that it's looking at, the distance from the floor, the distance of the burner flooded limit, um, the range that we're going to operate between. You can look at that in your submittal book. And these are the numbers that uh, normally work out to be um, the correct um, settings right in this area here. 
Um, so seven inches of water is equal to about 4.8 milliamps and 13 inches of water is equal to about 5.52 milliamps. That's with a brand new clean accurate pressure transducer. But when you install a new transducer sometimes you gotta adjust these numbers just a little bit via eye, raise them up a little bit, down a little bit to uh, keep it in a range to where the pump doesn't suck air on the suction or doesn't go to the burner flooded limit. Those two areas we're gonna scroll up here to the parameter list. There's a video coming behind this one which we've entitled uh, VFD number two navigation of the drive which is going to show you the buttons on the drive to push that are outlined in this procedure. But basically the drive has seven primary menus um, which you can navigate through and then uh, one group in a menu has another six or seven sub menus um, and uh, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And in the example, we went through the exact button pushing to change these two milliamp readings. Okay, like we talked about a minute ago or so, is the VFD has quite a few parameters on this sheet. All parameters that need to be changed on a new drive are highlighted in red on this column. So if you were to have a drive uh, fail and have to replace it, you would have to go in and change all the red parameters, the grayed out parameters you would not need to adjust. But to adjust the points at which the VFD kicks on to maintain a level, you need to go through to the third menu, which is I.O. Input Output and then navigate down to the parameters CRL3, which you see is a yellow here, and CRH3. These are default numbers that work in most water heaters. It's a good place to start. Sometimes you gotta hire this number up a little bit if the pump's sucking air, uh, and possibly hire this number a little bit up as long as you keep it away from that burner flooded limit. If somebody's been uh, into the drive and you're cleaning up after somebody, if you have multiple shifts, this parameter here, um, navigating through and changing to factory defaults, this will put all parameters back to factory defaults. Then you will have to go into the drive and uh, change all the red things uh, to what they should be based upon the yellow permissives here and sometimes you know associated with a note so below this procedure if you see note it tells you what you need to make that um, that decision and of course Kimco will help you do that if you uh, if you need help on that but if you reset the drive to default go back in and change all these red permissives um, skip all the other ones because they don't need to be changed from factory default which is outlined here right is it says the default is 20 on this permissive Chemco is 20 so it's grayed out meaning you don't have to change it all right so I hope that helps you uh, navigate a drive problem or adjusting a drive for um, a new transducer or a transducer that's slightly off the next video is uh, a real video to uh, just have you take a look at the drive and show you how to navigate through it. You have a good day, and we'll talk to you again. Thanks.